Hey everybody, this is Valerie Estes and Aaron Fleming. Welcome to the Project ALS Procetin live stream, your source for everything Procetin. For those joining us for the first time, let's uh, quickly review. Procetin is an ALS drug candidate that, with your help, Project ALS will deliver to human trial ASAP. So why are we excited to get Procetin to people with ALS? Number one, uh, Procetin was developed to hit a specific therapeutic target in ALS. Number two, um, we're excited because Procetin rescues motor neurons, the very brain cells that are destroyed in ALS. And uh, a third reason we're really, really psyched up is that Procetin is brain penetrant. And strangely, for reasons that we can learn from Mother Nature, not many drugs are brain penetrant. Um, but what's really cool is Procetin is designed to bathe the brain and every experiment that our Procetin colleagues have completed and published data on in, in laboratories across uh, Columbia University and, and our commercial partners uh, bears that out. And so those are a few uh, reasons we're excited. Uh, we hope you're as excited as we are. Um, and then a quick no uh, news item on our, our program to get Procetin uh, to first ever human trial. So. COVID-19 has knocked us off track timing-wise, but uh, Project ALS is getting back on track. We're getting back on with your help. Um, but, but interestingly, this week, the Procetin team recognized that if Project ALS raises $200,000, that's 200K, for our overall Procetin to trial goal of 1.6 million right now, if we do, if we can raise 200K now, uh, we will be able to move up a critical, like totally expensive <laughs> set of toxicity experiments at Charles River Labs, one of our commercial partners. The FDA needs these toxicity and safety experiments to be completed or to be started, I should say, um, before we can apply um, for, for our Procetin trial. And I just, you know, Aaron and I were talking before this uh, cast to say that uh, we can do 200 grand, we can do that. Um, and um, there are a couple of ways you can help right now. As, as always, you can make a donation and we know a lot of people are strapped right now, but give what you can to www.procetin2020.org. That's www. Procetin, P-R-O-S-E-T-I-N, 2020.org. Um, and then, then my, my best piece of advice is really to listen carefully to our guests today. They'll be very helpful to you. Um, they've been so helpful already to Procetin and Project ALS. Um, Amanda and Eric Stevens met as collegiate athletes at University of California, Berkeley. She was on the soccer team and he captained the football team. After a year in the NFL with the St. Louis Rams, Eric returned to California where he started a career with the City of Los Angeles Fire Department. Amanda and Eric were married on July 27th, 2019. One month later to the day, Eric was diagnosed with ALS at age 29. Since then, the Stevens, along with their family and friends, have formed Team Stevens Nation to battle the toughest fight of their lives, against ALS, against time. In less than one year, the Stevens have become leading activists to hashtag AxeALS, fighting for increased ALS awareness and for improved patient access to promising ALS treatments. They've appeared twice on The Ellen Show, that's where I saw them and fell in love with both, and in numerous other uh, media outlets since. They've um, headlined a TED Talk, met with Congressmen, they're up on Capitol Hill, pushing legislation, uh, pushing policymakers to understand the fight and the plight of ALS patients everywhere. Um, Amanda and Eric have raised significant funds to get set into clinical trial. And today we'll tell you how to help them help you and us. But, um, but first um, I wanna pass it over to Aaron, my colleague, Aaron Fleming who actually got to work with the Stevens. I'm very jealous. Um, on on the, the left coast, Los Angeles, we went back to Eric's old high school and raised a ton of money for Procetin. Um, so Aaron, cause you know them better than I do, I'm gonna 
allow you to ask the first question and I'm going to butt in. Thank you, Valerie. <laughs> <laughs> it's very generous. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah. as Valerie said, uh, I had the great pleasure of meeting Eric and Amanda back in February at Eric's alma mater um, for high school, Peninsula Palos Verde High School. And they raised almost $50,000 toward getting Perset into clinical trials. So we're so grateful to the Stevens and to these incredible high school students who, um, you know, really put their money where their mouth is. So I, Valerie kind of uh, gave, gave the lead away. And I think everyone already knows you, Eric and Amanda, so it's no secret, um, you know, what you're doing and what fight you're battling right now. But I guess, you know, we're in May 2020 now. And I just wonder, last year, May 2019, what did your life look like? Like, what were you thinking the next year of your life would be? What were you looking forward to? What were you doing every day? Yeah, so flashback to May last year, we were preparing for our wedding in July. Um, Eric was working as a firefighter. I was a teacher, a second grade teacher, and um, just hanging out with our dog, taking him to the beach, hanging out with friends, and kind of living a normal life, preparing for our wedding, um, and kind of looking into our future. Of course, we wanted to buy a house, start a family after we got married, and um, just kind of start this new married life together. And then um, we got married in July, and then like Valerie said, in August was when we got the diagnosis. So those plans all changed very quickly. Um, I, um, I just want to jump in because um, it's, it's, it just must have been such a shock for you guys. I, I mean, so, and, and a lot of people watching this, a lot of people who've had experience with ALS don't really know this. Like how, I'm Eric and Amanda, like how, how did you know you had ALS? Like, what, so you're planning, you have this wedding, you have this future in mind, you have this gorgeous, I may say, chocolate lab named Duke. Hi, Duke. Um, it's all in front of you, right? And so take us through those next moments. What happened? Yeah, it was, um, I first started noticing my, my hand um, was, was becoming weak. When I work out, I was um, having difficulty holding on to weights. Um, when I tried pull, <clears throat> pull ups and stuff, my left hand <clears throat> would slip off. So, started in my hand, um, <clears throat> and then it kind of <clears throat> moved to my speech. Um, <clears throat> so I went on the internet, kind of <clears throat> looked up my symptoms, and <clears throat> ALS kept popping up. Um, but I, you know, I didn't think I had it. I was like, oh, well, I'm too young. Um, I'm in really good shape right now. <clears throat> um, I eat healthy. I take care of myself. So, I, I, you know, in the back of my head, I thought maybe, but, you know, I, I, I didn't want to believe it. Um, so... I didn't really say anything to my family or friend, <coughs> friends. Um, we we're kind of focused on our wedding, uh, and after it's understandable, you know. Yeah. And so afterwards, when <coughs> we came back from our honeymoon, um, I told Amanda <coughs> a story uh, about my symptoms and showed her my my fascinations and um can I, I just made stop point. you right there because there Eric yeah. can I just stop you to ask the, here's a word that if you you're not in ALS land you don't you don't know what the heck it is and it's fasciculations right. what what are those and um you guys we talked before we came on today and you have a personal video of um the appearance of fasciculations as, as one of the first clues to you that you had ALS. Mm -hmm. um, but can you tell us what they are? And then if you wouldn't mind, we'd like to share this video with our, with our community. Yeah. yeah. 
Oh, so uh, sorry. I thought you said Aaron. <laughs> um, no, that's all right. You tell tell us what we're going to see. Okay. Yeah. So fasciculations, uh, they're basically you know uh, twitching throughout your your whole <clears throat> your whole body. Um, mine started in my triceps, uh, <clears throat> and then kind of spread to my shoulders, uh, my back, and now my legs and my my calves and my tongue um in my neck and um yeah it's just it's constant twitching 24 7 um it never stops and it never stops, it never yeah. stops. and it the more the more you exert off or walk work out swim, uh, whatever whatever you're doing yeah the worse they <clears throat> they get so you were saying eric this this appeared as maybe one of your first symptoms these fasciculations I'm yeah. wondering, you know, with your with your kind permission, we'd like to just share it with our with our viewers today. Aaron, can I you have uh, grab that? I do. Yeah. Right away, so I'm just All right. Maybe you can take us through this, Eric. So <clears throat> this is in our apartment um, in our bathroom. Yeah. I was <clears throat> actually sending it to my brother. Uh, who lives in Tennessee, and uh, I was asking him if, he, if this has ever happened to him or if he's ever seen this. And, so uh, I noticed that, like you were describing your tricep, there it's almost like um, like an, an undulation under the skin, almost like the the muscles are like snakes; they turn into little snakes. Right. Yeah, it's really weird. Um, and feels it's not comfortable. It's constant and it's annoying. Uh, and you don't really get used to them. <clears throat> yeah, I'm sorry. We just wanted to share that just because I think sometimes people glaze over when they think of ALS. It's like great people are suddenly having this disease and they don't really know what it entails. But you right. really, thank you so much for sharing that personal like physical journey. Yeah, I think as soon as <clears throat> I started having physiculations I was pretty confident that I had ALS. You pretty much That's because you had already read you had read up on it. Yeah I was pretty um, I mean I did a lot of research on it the months leading up to that <clears throat> as soon as I saw those I was like oh, <clears throat> oh no that's not good. So I mean, let's talk about that. So you had done a lot of research and you had had symptoms for several months before you finally went to see a neurologist and ask what was going on. Um, and I think, you know, so Project ALS has been around for, you know, over 20 years now. And we hear that things are, you know, maybe better. There's a lot of advancements. There's a lot of new research, like maybe patients would have a better experience and get a sense that there's, oh, Meredith, you're joining. <laughs> Meredith. <laughs> <laughs> Meredith, please sign out. <laughs> that was uh, Valerie's sister. <laughs> was My sister, great. she's the president of Project ALS. Let's <laughs> wanting, get real. Wanting to get in on the action. <laughs> yeah, she feels left out. To Next time, Meredith. <laughs> um, I guess it just, Eric and Amanda, you brought it out in her. Uh, <laughs> I think, um, you know, so we hear a lot about how there's there's so much, you know, going on and there's a lot to be excited about in ALS research. There's new clinical trials, you know, but I wonder, you know, when you finally went to a doctor, what was your experience? Was there a sense that there was anything that you could do or, you know, what, what did that look like actually being diagnosed with ALS? Yeah, so <clears throat> because I kind of self-diagnosed myself, I made an appointment with a neurologist right away. Instead of going, going to my family doctor, I went um, to the first neurologist I could get into. Um, <clears throat> and of course, there <clears throat> he didn't really give much info. He just kind of, he <clears throat> set you up with an MRI and an EMG. <clears throat> first available being <clears throat> is in three or four months. And we, yeah, so we just kept calling. We're like, three or four months is way too long. Yeah, I was like, no way. I'm not waiting four months. Like, I can't sleep at night. 
having serious anxiety just so <clears throat> I, I called every morning and just try to get in as soon as I can. Oh, oh, someone canceled. And then um, that first neurologist didn't give us anything. He said, uh, he sat us down and basically said, you have ALS, which is Lou Gehrig's disease. I'm sure you know what it is. Good luck. And then he walked out and we, like Eric fainted. I had to hold him up. We, he was like white. We were both in shock. Um, definitely worst day of our lives. And um, yeah, the first neurologist didn't give us anything. Um, and then after we kept thinking like, there's no way this, let's get a second opinion. This can't be right. Um, there's just no way. So his Rams, uh, the doctor at the St. Louis Rams and at Cal, or I'm sorry, his doctor at Cal, who's now with the LA Rams, um, got us in with Cedar sinai And we went there and saw an ALS specialist and they bought more tests just to make sure or to see if this is ALS. And um, ultimately it was, I think, if, if we're being positive and looking at the bright side of things, I think Eric did get diagnosed more quickly than most people. Um, which I think has given us more time to fight and figure out what we can do to slow this down. But um, I mean, it is ALS and we know how horrible and fast this disease hits. Um, but that neurologist talked to us a lot more about some options, the approved treatments. He talked about Rilazol and Radicava. Um, he he kind of gave us more options than the first but as we've come to realize and through our research is there just aren't many things available to really help right now so yeah, yeah. and you said there's you know a lot of <clears throat> a lot of promising research and and clinical trials uh, that are you know up and coming but um, you have to meet a certain criteria. Um, they only select a small few of people. Um, and, you know, that, that's the only way you have access to any of these promising trick, trick um, in the pipeline. So. Yeah, um, and I just wanted to mention before anything else that if you have questions for Eric and Amanda, you can enter them in the Q and A box here, um, and we'll get to them, you know, later on, um, because you know I, I didn't want to forget that. Yeah, I know. I was I was hoping we could hog them for ourselves. <laughs> Please, yeah, send in your comments and questions. Love to hear so, from you. I mean, obviously, you know, I, I think as you just said, Eric, there there was an uh, there was an issue that you know there were maybe treatments in clinical trials, but they were difficult to get access to. And as Valerie said at the top, and I think everyone knows because you know, you're know you celebrities essentially, um, you started your own effort. You started Team Stevens Nation to fight for a different route in ALS. So I guess, you know, what did you see missing? I think you've kind of already spoke to it, but what did you see missing for ALS patients? And, and what are you trying to do with Team Stevens Nation to address that? Right. So I think we're in a unique time where, <clears throat> you know, we have treatments that are look very promising and look very good in the clinical trials, and um, but there's no way to <clears throat> access to them, and there's a huge gap there, uh, there <clears throat> and we have a lack of support from our government and. Uh, outside agencies, which um, aren't helping us support, expand, <clears throat> expand as or compassionate use or open label extension. Um, and so, <clears throat> so what we're fighting for is try to bridge that gap and bring this, um, this issue to um, policymakers and the people in charge who can actually do something about this and hopefully create some sort of uh, pathway and a new 
you know, um, similar to what they're doing with COVID, um, uh, an accelerated process. <clears throat> process. Um, so the people that are diagnosed with ALS today aren't <clears throat> aren't forgotten or written off as a lot <clears throat> a loss because you know it doesn't have to be that way. There's hope, and we just got to people need to believe it, and people need to buy into it, and we need help. Well, we're here for you, and um, you've already helped us. And uh, I just wanted to mention at this point that May is ALS Awareness Month. Um, of course, every ticking second is ALS awareness for those of us who, who deal with it directly, but um, you guys have put together um, a sale of t-shirts that are so awesome. Um, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about it. I mean, I know that um, Stevens Nation and Project ALS with this limited edition LAFD uh, Axe ALS t-shirt are going to be supporting our efforts to get ProSet into human trial. So 100% of proceeds from the, from the purchase of this great looking t-shirt, which none of us has. Aaron, do we, can we grab a picture of it? Yes. I think we are. Yeah. Oh, look, who do we have here? <laughs> oh my gosh, celebrities. We're celebrities. Look, I mean, if Mark Wahlberg can get one, then y'all should be able to. <laughs> yeah, so how do, do you guys know Mark? And um, do you know a lot of stars? <laughs> no. We don't know. We don't know them. No. Um, you don't? Well, they know you. I mean, everybody's <laughs> coming to know you and, and get on the train. I mean, so, so Aaron, um, how can, how can we, how can people get this t-shirt so that they can help Axe ALS get for set into trial? So we, um, if you look at the chat, I know you can't click directly from the chat in Zoom, but our team is going to be dropping the link to purchase the shirt in. Oh, we just did. Um, and they're available. I think Eric and Amanda, you can update us on how they're going. I think they're selling fast, but they're still available in every size right now, right? Yes. Yeah, they are. They're $25, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. 100% um, go, is going toward Persetin. So every dollar sold there is going directly toward that $200,000 that Valerie was talking about to, to do this next safety study for Persetin. Um, and, and it's really amazing. I. I kind of wanted to go back, you know, so it's ALS Awareness Month, um, but, you know, Eric, you mentioned that, you know, ALS should be something like COVID where people are given the opportunity to try things and, uh, you know, try drugs that haven't been all the way through clinical trial if they have the potential to help. So I'm kind of wondering, you know, in your efforts, has COVID impacted it? Is there anything that people can do to keep ALS in the minds of, of our you know, our legislators or our public, um, you know, during ALS Awareness Month when everyone's just focused on COVID instead. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think on, the, on a positive note, um, COVID has shown uh, what the government can, could do. Um, and I think it, it might actually help, help us in the long run because um, we're seeing what what the FDA, what the government could do, <clears throat> what what we've been told they can't do, <clears throat> and now we're seeing it happen in <clears throat> right in front of our eyes. Yeah, I think also though all, the whole COVID has kind of slowed down our efforts with Congress and the government. Um, but like Aaron said, there are still ways for people to help keep ALS on their mind um, because it definitely is on their mind and we don't want it to leave their mind. So um, there is a function on our website where you can easily contact your government officials, FDA, you can tweet at them as well um, to just let them know not to forget about ALS. I mean, COVID will go away. We will it will pass, but unfortunately ALS will not. And so that's something we need to remind them and everything they're doing for COVID, we just need that same urgency and compassion for ALS. And yeah. um, 
But I think also when, when we send these emails and these tweets, that's obviously very important. But when we met with a congressman face to face, they said that's a lot more effective and impactful. So once COVID calms down, those people that really do want to help and help push these efforts forward, um, just reach out to your congressmen and senators and ask for a meeting and um, just talk about ALS and the issues that we have right now. And I think they're, they're willing to help. They want to help. It's just finding a way, um, like Eric explained, these new pathways or different trial design or just more access to the treatments because I know I can speak for him and probably every ALS patient, they'll try anything. I mean, it's something to try and it's something that could work and I think that they would try it, so. Yeah. Um, so I guess, you know, you've also done a lot of fundraising for Percetin and your advocacy efforts have been, you know, bigger than one drug. It's really about trying to make sure, as you said, that ALS patients have the chance to try anything that's new and promising, that it's not this like, let's wait for 10 years to see what the FDA has to say about it, because that's just not a realistic outcome in ALS. But I'm wondering, you know, we first spoke with you, I think last November or December. So what made you pick up the phone and call Project ALS about Percetin? <laughs> It was a misdial. <laughs> a phony, a phony phone call. No, it wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't at all. Um, so Eric's high school reached out to us saying that they wanted to do this fundraiser, and um, we were trying to really find an organization that knows, um, because I know Valerie and Meredith, your sister, had ALS, and so I know you know what it's like, and we think. Project ALS knows what it's like to have this disease. And that's so important to us because yes, other things are important for supportive care, of course, but um, we're, our goal, and I think it, it aligns with yours as well, is to get treatments into patients as soon as we can. And um, we know that's something that Project ALS is really pushing for with Procetin and immediately that was something that um, we wanted to help with and so I think your mission at Project ALS aligned with what we were really trying to accomplish and um, we wanted to help get Procetin into Eric and, and everyone as soon as we could so that's why we're, we're we contacted you and why we want to try to raise as much money as we can for Procetin. And, and Aaron, what was what was your experience like with Stevens Nation? Like when when you went to the um, LA area fundraiser, um, I just I I kind of experienced a good time through the video that I was getting. But um, mm -hmm. tell us what that was like, because there there just seems to be so much love for you two. What, well, what was the experience like, Aaron? I mean, first of all, it was crazy because the high school was just incredible. I'd never seen what, what is it the, when they released all the powder into the air? What is that called? I don't I've know. seen that before either. That was, uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> but it, it was kind of intimidating. I mean, it was just clear yeah. how much all of these students and Eric's old teachers were all there, you know, like how much everybody just loved Eric Stevens, just what an incredible guy you are um, and, and how lucky we were to have cross paths with you, although, you know, better circumstances, hopefully down the line. But it, it was amazing. I'd kind of never seen anything like it before. Um, I just wanted to ask one other question. So, you know, you came to us through Persetin and I think that our missions, you know, are very, we have the same goals, but we've brought on some other people like the scientists and the regulatory specialists and sort of the experts, you know, on the scientific end that are trying to get Percet into clinical trial, but you're also experts. You've been forced to become experts very quickly in ALS. So what would you tell them? Like what things should they be keeping in mind outside of their, you know, lab notebooks while they're moving Percet and forward? Um, I think it's so hard to try to put yourself in an ALS patient's shoes. I think it, it's um, almost impossible, but the like urgency is so important. I mean, unfortunately, these clinical trials, I mean, we know that they're important and science is important, but they take so long that 
an ALS patient can probably only do one or two in their lifetime. And, and that's, that's not okay. We need to fix that. And I think urgency, allowing more patients to try treatments through expanded access, compassionate use, open label extensions, I think is so important. Um, we just re like, we cannot stress that urgency enough. And just, I mean, they don't have a lot of time. As soon as something seems even the little bit of promise, um, I think it's important to get it into the bodies of patients as soon as possible. And um, it, it's so difficult because we know, we understand science, I understand the process, I respect it, but at the same time, it, it, it's just moving too slow. And, yeah, so Amanda, I agree with you. I feel like you were talking about respecting the process. We're just asking to edit the process yeah. in a responsible way so we do no further harm, um, and people can try promising experimental drugs and other therapies. I mean, yeah. it's not an outlandish ask. Yeah, and I think um, <clears throat> the fact that <clears throat> it takes $1.6 million to get a drug to clinical trials is, is crazy. And and that we have to do all this fundraising <clears throat> to just to try to get this into trials. Um, I think we um, we need more support, and uh, <clears throat> that needs to be exposed because that that's not right. Um, we're trying to help people with a hundred percent fatal terminal <clears throat> disease. <clears throat> we should be pushing these things through the pipeline and whatever we have to do to get that into people, our government and our, <clears throat> our organizations who have a lot of money should be helping out and, and pumping these things through. Yeah. Yeah. And, and what, I, you're describe, what you're describing is patriotism <laughs> at its most basic level. Right. I mean, you're a true patriot to me. Um, I just, I also just, I want to underscore, and I, I hope you guys have faith in Project ALS and what we're doing with ProSatin, that in spite of COVID and the fact that our, you know, revenue streams have kind you know, our fundraising has become quite difficult during COVID because all of our events were canceled and online fundraising is kind of tough, but yeah. we commit to you today, we commit to everyone watching and who knows us, um, we are going to get ProSet into human trial as fast as we can and as responsibly as we can. And gosh, Stevens, let's hope that we can set a template so that every time there's a promising drug, it's, you know, it's a possibility for people who are diagnosed with an untreatable illness. It's, it's just yeah. absurd. So we've made a lot of progress. Again, I just want to also say that with $200,000 over the next two weeks, Team Procetin has figured out that we can move one of the very expensive talk studies that we had to push back because of COVID and funding issues that we're able to push now up a couple of months. So with your kind donations today, um, we, we can make some progress on that front. Yeah, and I just wanna say also that, you know, we know, um, that things don't end when you get to phase one clinical trial. And I think another place where we really want to set a blueprint with Persetin is in making sure that people outside of a small phase one trial are able to get access as quickly as possible. So it's not just about going through the normal, you know, 10 year phase one, then phase two, then phase three. And every time it's, you know, 10 to 100 or a couple hundred patients and half of people are getting placebo and then there's no access outside of this just not acceptable in any way in ALS. And I think any company, our goal with Percetin is that there's a new blueprint where any company that wants to develop a drug with ALS has to think about um, how are we going to get this drug to as many people as possible if it shows any promise. I know we're not the only ones working on that. You guys are, there are many other great advocates out there and we'll be talking to more people about it. Yeah. Um, but but it's, it's a huge priority for us because the way things are done now, as you said, is just um, really unacceptable. Yeah, right. no, totally. And um, I, I hope that we continue to earn your 
trust and grow your faith through the Procetin program because I think it shows the teamwork of, um, of so many different sort of uh, entities. So like drug companies like Charles River uh, Labs, um, uh, people like Patheon at Thermo uh, Scientific, Thermo Fisher, um, these are close, they're, they're team members as you are. They want now to get Procet into human trial as badly as we do. So we're all helping each other. We believe that this should be the culture of discovery in ALS and that right. patients should have access to more shots on goal responsibly. Um, and, and we gotta just, we gotta work on this redesign. But in the meantime, we wanna start this trial, yo. Right. Yeah, right. kind of, yeah, yeah. So um, anything you want to leave us with in, in ALS Awareness Month, Eric and Amanda? Um, yeah, I think like Valerie and Aaron said, um, go purchase your t-shirt because all those proceeds will go towards Procetin. Um, the fire department wanted to help and they designed these shirts. LAFD is actually wearing them on duty for the month of May. So it's amazing. And um you have the opportunity to buy one and the every single penny will go towards Project ALS's drug Procetin. So um, that's, I think that's just remarkable. I'm just wondering how can we um, get on a Zoom with firefighters? Just curious. <laughs> Asking for a friend. <laughs> no, but it would be so much fun to like kind of rally together around this t-shirt and just sell the heck out of it. Yeah, um, pushing hard. Um, <clears throat> trying to make it not just LAFD, but um, the, the whole country to get involved and, and try to get other fire departments involved so we can just keep, keep wow know, get this momentum rolling and, and hopefully we get, you know, present in the clinical trial ASAP. We're going to do it. With you guys, we're going to do it. Um, <laughs> I think uh, we're going to go now. Um, Eric, Amanda, it's been such an honor chatting with you. I look forward to all of our near-term and future efforts to get Procetin and other drugs to people who need it for ALS. And um, Aaron, thanks always for, for centering the conversation or start freaking out about firefighters and the chance of meeting them. But um, <laughs> we love you guys and, and thank you for all you've done and continue to do for ALS, ALS research and awareness. And um, let's go Procetin, Procetin2020.org. Give as you can. Uh, visit the Stevens Nation website. Buy a, a t-shirt, please. If the weather is getting nice out, out east here, let's, let's rock it in, in this t-shirt. Um, I will have the guts to put it on soon. Okay, <laughs> listen, you guys. Um, we have another great uh, live stream coming up next week when I think, do you guys know Sandy Morris, eh? Yeah. 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 Sandy Morris, another member of a great team that's going to figure out how we can try better medicine in ALS. Uh, so yeah. we're going to be chatting to uh, Sandy next week about oh, the promise yeah. of Procetin and, and her journey. And uh, gosh, let's please be in close touch with everyone watching today. Thanks so much for tuning in. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Amanda. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Bye. Bye.